Hello there, this is Zed Juarez from Channel 9, coming to you from the beautiful city of Macau, here in the wonderful country of Belgium, for Techorama 2016. And I have the three stooges of Techorama itself. These dudes are awesome. Why don't you introduce yourselves, guys? Uh, I'm Kevin. I'm Kevin de Rillig, and uh, I'm one of the stooges. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, I work here uh, normally as a teacher, but once a year, I uh, do my best to make this uh, a great conference. No, you, not only do you do your best, but it's an awesome conference. Let's go right here. Thanks, Seth. Um, so my name is Peter. I'm also one of the founders of uh, Techorama. Uh, my day-to-day -day job, I'm a ALM consultant, so I do consultancy activities. Fantastic. <coughs> and I'm Jill. Also one of the founders. I uh, work at uh, Ordina as a .NET consultant, and once a year we all gather here with about a thousand people here in Mechelen for Techorama. So how did Techorama come came about? Because I know this is this is the third one, right? This is the mm -hmm. third. One. Officially the third one, but there's been yeah. events in Belgium before. Yeah. How did sort of Techorama start up? Well, basically it all started about ten years ago already. So um, there was a small conference that that uh, we started. Uh, as a free conference, it's called Community Day, uh -huh. and um, that took place about seven years next to the official Microsoft Tech Day. And then Tech Days in 2013 was the last edition. And meanwhile, Community Day had already grown to about four or five hundred people. That was a completely free conference. And then uh, Microsoft stopped with Tech Days, and they said, "Why don't you build something new? Because we have the experience in house on how to do a conference." And that's when we put our heads together and we said, why don't we do something completely new? And that's how Techorama was born in the uh, summer of 2013. And then the first one was in 2014. 2014, right? yeah. It took us about a year to put the first one together. And then uh, in May, end of May 2013, sorry, that was the first one. So the hardest part, go ahead. The, the hardest part was to find a name. Yeah, the, the name was extremely yeah. difficult. I mean, the yeah. program, uh, for programmers, when naming things and off by yeah. one error is sort of the hardest thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Name stuff. Yeah. So what, are some of, what were some of the challenges initially that you had with Techorama? And how did you sort of overcome them? And additionally, the other question is, it didn't start with a thousand people. How did, they, how did it grow over the years? Yeah. I don't think there's a secret formula for organizing uh, conferences. just hard work and making sure uh, that we can work together. We are also have a a great crew, some, some of them are standing here, so you need to have a bunch of volunteers who can also help to, to ac accomplish those type of things. Uh, in the beginning it was um, yeah, our, our goal to find very good speakers who could deliver very good content, and if you can start with those basics, then uh, yeah, it can only get better because we, we want to be responsive, we want to improve every year, we want to build up a, a very unique experience, not only for the attendees, but also for the speakers, for the, the partner booths, so everyone who's involved in organizing this conference. So logistics for this conference has to be pretty crazy. I mean, you are having, I think I saw from 19 different countries, people here, speakers from all around the world. How do you manage this kind of huge, Sort of endeavor. Well, first it it's, it already starts very early because uh, from Next the moment, that, <laughs> well, yeah, from the moment and this one uh, is going to start, we need to yeah first contact speakers for next year because uh, it's uh, it's conference season sure. right now. So uh, we we will start with this and then we uh, need to make sure that everybody gets well here and have uh, a great stay. I think that's uh, also uh, important for us that speakers love to be here. We do a lot of uh, stuff for that, and so we have to uh, check for the best hotel, we have to uh, check for the best food, best catering, speaker dinner, and so on. So that takes quite a while to, to find all these different places and, and opportunities sometimes that we... Uh, we have to test restaurants oh, <laughs> for, to find the speaker in the location. Yeah, stop, which, was <laughs> which was delicious. Which was delicious. So how do you... How do you manage the vision of Techrama? Because I, if, I can feel every every conference has its own sort of feeling. This was more like a you're really close to the speaker. The speakers are really close to you. It feels like everyone's here together. There's other conferences where you go where it's like there they are, there we are. And so, how do you stay true to the vibe of Techrama while still dealing with the tiny little things like when does this speaker get in and how many drinks should we have? I mean, how do you do that? <laughs> Well, I think one of the most important things that we're developers as well, and we speak at conferences, so we can take the experience of different con uh, conferences in, in our conference as well. 
And um, so that's already a first important uh, decision that we took about that. And then, yeah, for the drinks, that's something that Gilles manages. <laughs> Gilles decides how many drinks <laughs> everybody he's can the, have. He so uh, the drink he needs he's to sign person. off. Yeah. I do the logistics part. So <laughs> yeah, when when I say drinks are gone, well, basically it's gone. It's done. It's yeah. Drinks, yeah. So how do you how do you divide the work? Like, is it yeah, like I'm logistics? Yeah. Uh, you're this and you're that. Yeah. I mean, how yeah. do you divide yeah. that? The conference, the, the setup, the logistics around the conference. That's what I do mostly. Peter is our uh, financial brain, yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, all the invoice stuff, the yeah. ticketing all the, stuff, all the ordering uh, yeah. that and, needs to be and done. And, uh, Kevin does most of the, uh, the ordering, the, 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 the shirts, the, the hotel, hotel, speaker, speaker dinner. dinner. Yeah. So yeah, we have our room because otherwise it's not manageable to do this. Yeah. So one of the things I like about Techorama is, like I said before, it feels very like everyone is together. It's a community. Yeah. It's a community, really community event. It's there's only certain events that, that feel like that. How do you foster that kind of feeling at this event? What are some things that you proactively have done to make it so that everyone feels like they're together? I I think it's also because we are already for a long time involved in the community in Belgium. So we also the leaders of the Visual Studio user group in Belgium. So we all organize also monthly a local user group. So we know a lot of people that are working at a lot of companies, also at our partners. So we are really close to our development community in Belgium. And we also try to be very responsive. If we get mails or questions or uh, feedback f uh, through Twitter, we always try to answer or to do something with the feedback we get. So I think that's also very key for, for becoming a, a great conference. And, and also, like this year, for example, we, we built a big lounge yeah. outside, which is a place where people can sit together, meet, discuss things that they've seen. Um, last year, we introduced the, uh, the speaker's lunch, mm -hmm. which is uh, on the second day. We, we put the names of the speakers on the tables where people have dinner or have lunch. And uh, so the speaker has lunch there and people can come and, and just talk, just hang out with the speaker. The speaker should not be the idol that is standing on, on the stage. The speaker is, is the same as we are. Absolutely. So uh, that's, that's why everyone is, is, is completely approachable at Techorama. And also our partner. So you talked about vision. So basically we had a three-year vision, a three-year plan when we started. So year one was, was the year of the partner, so our, our partners who help us set up the conference. Sure. Year two was the, the year of speaker. Uh, and so for example we, we, we now have massage salon uh, in, the, in, the, in the speaker room. So every year we, 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 we focus on one group and this year was the year of the F and D. So that's why the lounge is there, why we have a, a Belgian waffle stand, why we have a coffee booth and all these kinds of things. And so that's how we, we improve the developer experience because we don't see us as a conference, we see ourselves as an experience yeah, the conference. And so that's how we, we every year try to build on what we already have. And we see what works, what doesn't work. And, and, and we see a lot of connection because this morning we were talking about the fact that we, we look at the pictures of yesterday and you see that people compared to last year, they, they're completely in, engaged in discussion with each other. They're, they're, they're hanging out at the, at the partner booth. So connection seems to work. I think the vibe is right. I know. There's a lot of entertainment. I also made some calculations. So I also um, uh, looked up the numbers. So who is coming to our conference? And I, I think it's about 20% who is, who is coming already before, so who, who came in 2014 or 15, they're also present here in 2016. So the, the people are also coming back. We also get a lot of new people because we are also becoming bigger. Sure. So it's, it's really a, a, good, a good idea to, to know who's coming and who should we attract in the future. It, it has disadvantages because the boot people, they stay from, from, from our partner boots. So what we also do is we have a, a game Mm -hmm. that um, that um, attendees have to go to a number of booths in order to win something. Yeah. And so basically that, that engages them to go to the booths because at, at some other conferences you, you see that they don't go to booths. Belgians, for example, they're not very very outgoing. They, they, they're more of it, yeah, they're ashamed to, to start talking to, sure. to people. And so now we have found a way to have them engage with the partners. And so the disadvantage for partners is that they're tired. <laughs> <laughs> they're tired. They, they have so much boot work that they're tired. Yeah. Yeah, it's good for them, but of course they're tired. Absolutely. Yeah. So the first year, how many attendees did you have and how have the attending numbers grown? 
600, last year 800, now 1,000. And you also mentioned that you were on a three-year plan. What's, what's, oh, what's the future? Those are the tough questions. Yeah. yeah. The, we we need to that question yeah. quite a lot. Eh? But we need to organize a brainstorm weekend with, uh, yeah. with the three of us and uh, really think about where we want to go at. So we have some options already in our minds, but we need to to go through with uh, yeah. a plan for yes. the future. That's a difficult one. We don't know it at, at this point. But we do know that there's going to be a Tegorama 27. Yeah, of course. The date we we cannot stop things. now. Oh, yeah. what, what's the date? <laughs> I think it's the 22nd of May, I think. It's yeah. Also, one of our goals is to become even more international because yeah. we have a, lo a lot of local attendees, we have a lot of international speakers who come to Belgium to speak at Tecorama, but we also want to attract more people from other countries, mm -hmm. sure. so from, from Europe or where, wherever. So that's also one of our uh, goals. Well, I love it. Tecorama, I came last year, it was wonderful. Tecorama, I came this year, it was even more wonderful. Good job on a wonderful conference. It feels like you're almost running out of space now yeah. for mm -hmm. the amount of people. If you if projections continue, yeah, we have to talk with them to build a bigger uh, venue. Yeah, as well. let's just build a bigger venue. Yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. So for those that are, are watching that maybe haven't had a chance to come to Tecorama, what do you say to them? Chill. <laughs> uh, book that date for 2017 already on your agenda because. What we did this, this year, we're gonna try to top it next year. Yeah. My my advice is uh, just talk with other guys who went to Tecorama and uh, see if uh, if it's something to go for. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for this wonderful conference. I know I've had a great time. It's a beautiful country, lots of wonderful people. You put on a great show. Thanks so much. Thanks. Seth. Thank you, Seth. Thanks we so hope much. to have you back in the future. Uh, I hope so. Again, we are here in the beautiful city of Mechelen for Tecorama 2016 with the wonderful founders of this conference. My name is Seth Juarez. This is Channel 9. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. I uh, do my best to make this uh, a great conference. No, you, not only do you do your best, but it's an awesome conference. Let's go over here. Thanks, Seth. Um, so my name is Peter. I'm also one of the founders of uh, Tecorama. Uh, my day-to-day -day job, I'm an uh, ALM consultant, so I do consultancy activities. The third one, right? This is the mm -hmm. third one. The officially the third one, but there's been yeah. events in Belgium before. Yeah. How did sort of Tecorama start up? Well, basically, it all started about 10 years ago already. So um, there was a small conference that, that uh, we started uh, as a free conference. Of Tecorama <laughs> itself. These dudes are awesome. Why don't you introduce yourselves, guys? Uh, I'm Kevin, I'm Kevin de Rudig, and uh, I'm one of the Stooges, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, I work here uh, normally as a teacher, but once a year. Fantastic. <coughs> and I'm Jill, also one of the founders. I uh, work at uh, Ordina as a .NET consultant, yeah. and once a year we all gather here with about a thousand people here in Mechelen for Tecorama. So how did Tecorama come about? Because I know this is... This is Hello there, this is Ed Juarez from Channel 9, coming to you from the beautiful city of Mechelen, here in the wonderful country of Belgium, for Tecorama 2016. And I have the three stooges, 